everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. You're ready. You've watched all the videos on how to buy a CNC. You've planned it out. You've got the space. You've got the power. You've watched all the alignment videos. You're ready. You've made the decision to buy a used machining center, whether it be a mill or a lathe. Now, this decision cannot be taken lightly. These are expensive pieces of equipment, even the used old ones. You're on the order of a car. When you buy a car, you do a lot of research. If you're buying a used car, you need to inspect that car. Maybe you have a friend that's a mechanic, you'll bring them with you. They look at the car. So in this video, I'm going to cover some of the basic things that you need to ask yourself and have good answers for before you even pick up the phone to call somebody about inquiring on a machine for sale. Then we'll talk a little bit about what you should look for when you actually go to inspect a machine. So you found a machine that you might want to buy. You've done all your research on it. You're ready to make that phone call but don't do it just yet. Here's some very important questions you have to ask. Number one, can you get parts and how much do they cost? If you can't get parts for that machine, you want to seriously consider buying it. Or not consider buying it. If you can't get parts and it breaks, what are you going to do? There are still options, but they become very expensive and very time consuming. That may be a reason why that machine is so cheap. So first question, can I get parts? And how much do they cost? There's a lot of old Akuma lathes out there and they work just fine and they're wonderful machines and they're extremely accurate, but they're so old that you can't get controllers for them anymore. So if any of the cards, which are proprietary, go bad, you cannot replace those anymore. So if the controller goes bad, what do you do? Well, you have to pay for a retrofit. Price out a retrofit, see how much it's going to cost. I bet you it starts at 30 grand for an approximate, you know, professional level CNC controller. Don't buy one of these machines and think you're going to run one of these PC-based or Arduino-based CNC controllers on it. Yes, you can do it. There's a couple of people that have done it. You're not going to get stellar results. You're not going to be happy. Okay? These machines need a professional controller on them. So, parts, cost. Next, can you get the manuals? Can you find the manuals? Can you get them ahead of time? Can you read them? And can you understand them? Is the machine completely goofy? Or is it straightforward? That's why I chose a Fidel. It's fairly straightforward. All the manuals are downloadable online. That was just awesome. That's worth its weight in gold. Okay, so can you get the manuals? And then number three is, is there still support out for that machine? If you search for help for that machine, does anything come up in Google? If there are zero posts anywhere about your machine at all, again, you might want to reconsider buying that machine. Because it's going to, if you run into a problem, it's going to be hard for you to get support and get help that you need. Some of the machines, they're not supported at all and you know, they've been out of service for so long, there's not, there's not people around that know how to use them and work them in and out. Okay, so that's very important. And can you get local support? You know, if the nearest support is halfway around the world from you buying that machine, that also might be a problem. So before you even pick up the phone, parts, cost of parts, manuals, support. Okay, once you answer all those questions, now you can pick up the phone and you can start that dance. Okay? Now the next thing you want to do, the first thing you ask when you're on the phone, does the machine power up? If the answer is no, it does not power up, 
Again, that's a big factor for reconsideration on buying that machine. If it doesn't power up, it could be something stupid simple and cheap to fix, or it could be on the level of a whole new controller, and that's very expensive. So again, you know, you have to ask these questions. If the previous owner of the machine doesn't have it hooked up and refuses to hook it up, walk away. Just walk away. Don't, don't continue, don't waste your time, don't waste their time. If you buy a used car and you walk onto the car lot and say, hey, I like this car, can I take it for a test drive? And the salesman says, nope, sorry, you gotta buy it like it is. Would you buy the car? Probably not. Same goes with these. If you can't power them up, you don't know if the controller's good, you don't know if the servo axis drives are good, you don't know if the servo's good, you can't spin the spindle to find out how the spindle sounds, you know absolutely nothing. And some of the most expensive parts of these machines are those items. The electronics, the controllers, the drives, the motors. Okay? Yes, the mechanicals are expensive, but the electronics typically give you more of a problem than the mechanicals. Ball screws really haven't changed in the last 30 years. They've tweaked the designs for them, but the footprints still generally match. The linear slides on this machine are no longer made, but they have a direct bolt-in replacement that's the exact same dimensions. So I can buy linear slides brand new, and I don't have to go through a specialty company. I can just call the original slide manufacturer and say, hey, here's the old part number, cross it, and send it to me. That's what I did for my X slides. So again, you know, parts are everything, and can you power it up to make sure that it works? So now you've negotiated a deal, the machine powers up, you're going to go inspect it. What tools do you need to bring? And this is pretty basic, but remember, it's all about your knowledge. You have to know what to look for and what questions to ask. If you have a friend, just like the mechanic in the used car, if you have a friend that knows CNC machines inside and out, pay him. I highly advise, if, you know, if he doesn't you know, donate his time, find somebody that you can hire to bring with you that knows what they're looking at. Okay? If you don't know, find somebody that does. You know, home inspectors are a big thing now for homes because so many people have been getting burned you know, buying lemons of homes. You can buy lemons of machines really easy. So if you do know what you're looking at, what tools do you need? You need three basic tools at a bare minimum. Number one, a crowbar. Yes, just your standard crowbar. Okay? Number two, a magnetic base and a dial indicator. Okay? So what the heck does a crowbar have to do with anything? Well, you cannot test for free play in a machine just by simply leaning on it or pushing on it, especially if you're looking at a larger machine. And if you follow tip number one and you find the manuals, inside the manuals will tell you how to test for free play either in a boxed way system or in a linear rail system. So with these two tools, you can easily judge the health of the, the ways or the linear guides without having to take anything apart. Okay? There's key points on the machine that you put the crowbar and you put the dial indicator and you just give little nudges. You're, you're not aping on it, we're not hanging off the crowbar, you're just giving little nudges, checking for free play. Okay? You know, the x-axis problem on this machine was easily found with a crowbar and a dial indicator. Unfortunately, it wasn't found until the machine landed in my garage. Okay? So those are two items that you need. A third item that you're going to want is a tool holder for that machine. The longer the tool holder, the better. Now, I made a video on how to test for spindle runout and how to check a spindle where there's a test where how to test the preload of the spindle bearings. You need a tool holder to do that. So that's why you want to bring a tool holder. So with those three basic tools, you can get a very good idea of the overall health of the critical systems of that machine. We can use the crowbar to check for free play. 
We can use the dial indicator for the free play, backlash, run out, spindle bearing preload, the whole nine yards. So that's what you want to do. Then you also want to typically bring a test program with you. Just a simple program. Run the axes, the X, Y in a circle, you know, ramp the Z up and down. You just want to hear how everything sounds. Does it sound nice and smooth or does it sound like there's a bunch of rocks rolling around in there? Okay, if there's a bunch of rocks rolling around in there, not all hope is lost. It just means that you need to make some decisions. Can you repair it yourself? Do you need to pay somebody to repair it? Will the seller repair it as part of the negotiated cost of the machine? So these are the things that you have to account when you're going to buy these. Okay, you want to make sure that the controller works, all your features work. Check the interlocks. A lot of times the interlocks are defeated. If you get a machine on your floor and the interlocks are defeated and you get an inspection come in and your interlocks don't work, you know, you can face fines. So make sure your interlocks work. The interlocks on this machine did not work. It was an easy fix. It was just a broken wire. But if you can't fix that yourself and you have to pay somebody to fix that, you know, it took about eight hours to trace it all out and find the wire within the probably mile of wire that's in this stupid thing. Okay? It took quite a bit of time. And time is where a lot of your money is going to go if you can't do these things by yourself. Okay? You also have to judge how much is your time worth. Okay? So just quick rundown again to recap. Before you even call, can you get parts? How much do they cost? Can you get the manuals? Is anybody local going to be able to support that machine with you? Then after you make the phone call, does the machine power up? Can you run the machine? Go visit and inspect the machine. When you inspect the machine, bring our three cardinal tools, crowbar, dial indicator, and magnetic base, and a tool holder. We want to check all the axes for free play. You know, check the health of our boxed ways, check the health of the linear slides if it's a linear machine, check your ball screw backlash. These are all wear items that could need, you know, some attention. And then from that, you can know if you have a good value machine or not. Typically, the prices of machines will equal out in the end. If you buy a beat up, you know, take it out to the curb type of machine, and then put a whole bunch of money into it to get it back up to factory operating, it will pretty much end up costing you the same amount of money as it does if you were to just buy a machine that worked. So that's something you have to consider. Now I chose the route of trying to find a lower cost machine that had more problems with it. You know, it needed a lot of TLC, but I was able to do the work myself. And by doing the work myself, I was able to save a significant amount of money, though it took me about 400 hours of labor. Okay, between all the cleaning, the alignment, the replacing of the parts, you know, the tool changer needed a complete rebuild, the XY slides needed rebuild, you know, all the way covered seals were shot, the way covers were all bent up, you know, all of that, you know, took a lot of time. So you have to factor in what your time is worth. If you don't have a lot of capital, it drives the cost of your time down. If you have a lot of capital, then maybe your cost of your time is very high. Again, it's a personal decision that you have to make. So I've been getting a lot of questions on this exact topic. So I, I hope that helps clarify some of the basics uh, that you should look for and check when you're considering buying a machine. Uh, Feel free to leave some comments below if you want to see anything specific uh, done or performed. I think my alignment series and, and other videos cover a lot of what you should be looking for already. But if you want anything uh, done specific, you know, leave some comments below. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.